Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today it's still a while for we are playing some more franchise Rocky manager 7 with my Tampa Bay lightning historical challenge all right so we are in a decent spot right now uh, to make the playoffs in the 1995-1996 season uh, but uh, we shouldn't take anything for granted uh, that standings are pretty tight uh, so with seven games left here in the season we have our destiny into our own hands now um the good news is that we have no injuries so we are healthy here for the last stretch uh, knowing the game um, it likes to throw you some injuries right before the playoffs uh, so hopefully we can avoid that uh, this time around here uh, i've put brent gretzky back into the lineup on my third line and i scratch uh, scott pellerin uh, we lost the scott pellerin effect in the last game we lost against washington so yeah uh, nothing much more to report other than that uh, of course we had made those tiny trades at the trade deadline and everything now we cannot trade anymore uh, not until after the playoffs so let's get going and hopefully uh, we can make some noise in the playoffs who knows if Abby Boulin gets hot who knows what might happen all right league says no suspension for Bill Older oh look at that that little bug is coming back here okay all right so no suspension for Bill Older so the bug I'm referring to, uh, referencing is that I'm only seeing a one arm for the for the player instead of his old picture all right and the owner is satisfied with our uh, work here yeah I don't see my face there and Ugh. all right let me pause and I'm gonna try and figure that out and I'll be right back All right, it looks like I fixed it. Uh, I had to go into my save file and delete the players and personal folders. Uh, well, not the folders, but the pictures within. So if you have that issue show up while you're playing the game, that's and just rebooting the game doesn't do it. It didn't for me this time. Uh, that's how you can fix it. You just go into the saved folder on your computer for the the league you're playing, and you go in there and you go into play graphics and then player picks and personal picks. You go into those folders, you set it all, and you delete, and then you load the game back up, and it will uh, regenerate the pictures with you know the default uh, not the default the defects in it there so doing a little bit of reading like i thought i had some piercings or something but uh, doing a little bit uh, of reading looks like this version of the game has like some defects with uh, where players have uh, or you know face gen has black dots in them so it's no it's no piercings all right, so those players are feeling better about being on the team. We're about to play the Waiters. Waiters is one of the teams that is chasing us. They are 35, 36, and 4. That is good for 7th in the East. Uh, we are 2-1 and one against Hartford. A win here would be a pretty sweet. All right, so the Whalers are going to have Chris Osgood in net. We are going to go with Nikolai Abibulin. All right, go Lightning, go. Oh, n not necessarily. Uh, <laughs> that was a nail-biter. We won one nothing, so it's a, it's a W. We will take it, uh, but uh, one nothing. So both goaltenders played really well, and there was only one goal scored. Uh, we outshot Hartford 36 to 31. Nikolai Abibulin was the first of the game, 31 saves, the win and the shutout. Uh, Bartolone for Hartford was the second star with no uh, 
no points, and Alexander McGillney was the third star with an assist. We had 15,749 people in attendance uh, for this game. Only goal of the game happened in the first period. That was Brian Bradley from Alexander McGillney, and that is it. Nobody else scored, just some penalties tr uh, trickled down uh, in the periods, but that's it. All right, suspension over for Brandon Shannon. He is back in the lineup, and Alexei Zamnov is suspended for the Jets. He is going to miss four games. All right. All right, so we are about to host the Buffalo Sabres. So Buffalo is 29-41-7. and seven. They will not be in the playoffs this year. Uh, they are 11th in the East with that record. We are 2-0-1 against Buffalo. And, of course, the one is a, uh, a tie. So we're going to keep the same lineup in for the game against the Sabres. Dominic Kashek is going to be in net for Buffalo. We are going with Nikolai Abibulin. Come on, guys. Give me another win here. And it is a win. We won 4-3, to three, so we're doing what we can to ensure that we're going to be in the playoffs. So we're taking care of our own business. The other teams, they can play against each other, lose and everything. We're taking care of our own business here. All right, so we were actually outshot in that game, 35-29. to 29. Alexander McGillney had a pretty good game against his former team. He had two goals and two assists. Matthias Olund uh, for Buffalo uh, was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Brian Bradley had a three-assist night. 15,445 people in attendance for the game. Uh, Robert Zvela opened up the scoring in the first for Mikael Anderson and Alexander McGillney. Then Buffalo scored twice and took a 2-1 lead, but then Alexander McGillney tied the game before the end of the period from Brian Bradley and Yanni Lacanon, tied at 2 here after 1. Then in the second period, Alexander McGillney scored again from Brian Bradley and Alexander Karpovtsev. It was 3-2 Tampa Bay. Then Buffalo tied the game. And then Mikael Anderson scored from Brian Bradley and Alexander McGillney. It was a 4-3 lead after two. Nobody scored in the third period. And we won this game fair and square 4-3. Now, tomorrow we are playing on the road in Pittsburgh. I'm going to go ahead and send Jeff Hackett for that one. Uh, Russ Courtnall extends his goal streak to five games with a goal against the Chicago Blackhawks. And Steve Eiserman extends his point streak to 12 games with a goal against uh, the Mighty Ducks. All right, let's go ahead and send Jeff Hackett in net for that one. All right, my second line has been pretty quiet so far today. Well, today I mean in this recording so hopefully we can uh, get something going and um, so pittsburgh is really good of course they are 54 18 and 5 that's good for first in the east we are one and two against pittsburgh um, hopefully we can beat them again it's gonna be a tough ordeal i mean it's possible we've done it before so jeff hackett is gonna be in net for us ron tugnut is gonna be in net for the penguins and we lost 3 nothing, so we couldn't score here. Uh, we were outshot 38-23. to 23. Danton Cole, oh, look at that. Uh, former Lightning here playing against his former team. First star with a goal and an assist. Yaromir Jagger was the second star with two assists. And Mario Lemieux was the third star with a goal and an assist. Not a whole lot to talk about. Pittsburgh scored in the first period, then they scored twice in the second, and that was it. No fights to report, nothing. Yeah, that one was kind of a a schedule loss, almost, or at least that's how it feels. Uh, Artford's Mark Gregg is suspended. He's going to miss three games. Uh, Rob Zemuner, former Tampa Bay Lightning, was... Suspend is suspended. He's, gonna, he's going to miss five games. 
Alright, and uh, Pat Verbeek scored his 400th goal in his career. Uh, got a goal against Washington. Pat Verbeek is 31. He is still a three-star player. I'm going to put Abby Bullen back in net. So Bob Sweeney is on the waivers. I am not going to pick him up. Steve Eiserman extends his point streak to 13 games with an assist against the Hawks. Yeah, we're about to play the Islanders now. The Islanders is also a pretty good team. They are 42, 32, and 4. They are fourth in the east right above us and we are one in three against the islanders this season this is definitely a team we've struggled against so a little w here would be pretty awesome all right so robert shistad is gonna be in net for the islanders we are gonna go with nikolai bibulin oh Oh dear lord. Okay. Um, <laughs> we lost 9 to 3. Not exactly the type of performance you want to see right before the playoffs. That's a, a little concerning here. Uh, we were doubled in shots 52 to 26. Pierre Turgeon was the first star of the game. He had two goals and four assists. Ray Ferraro uh, was the second star of the game with four assists. And Yui Krupp was the third star with three assists. We had 15,877 people in the stands, and I bet they wish they were somewhere else. So the Islanders took a 5 0 lead into the first period. Then we had Robert Zvela score on the power play from Brian Bradley, and then Alexander McGinley on the power play as well from Robert Zvela and Brian Bradley. It was 5 2 Islanders after one. Then we came to within two, actually. Uh, Len Barry scored from Alex Selivanov and Rob Zemayo. It was a 5-3 Islanders lead, but then they scored again, made it 6-3. Then they added three more goals in the third period. We never were in that game. All right, memorable game for Riferaro. As we saw, he had four assists. Good night for Pierre Turgeon. We saw that as well. Memorable game for Chris Draper in Vancouver. He had three goals and two assists against the Mighty Ducks. Wow. Memorable night for Luke Robitaille in that same game. He had three goals and an assist. Dan Quinn scored his 300th goal of his career with a goal against uh, the Rangers. Dan Quinn is 30 and he is a two and a half star player. And Brettel extends his goal streak to five games with a goal and an assist against the Jets. All right, and we are in Florida to play against the Panthers. Panthers are 19, 46, and 14. That's good for 12th in the East. Oh, sorry about that. Somebody's speeding in my street, apparently. Even though it's a 25 miles an hour street. But, you know, not going to stop Midwesterners from doing whatever the heck they want. Um... Okay, so Florida is 12th in the East, and we are pretty good against them. Uh, we are 4-1 this season against the Panthers. Hopefully we can win again, uh, bounce back after that terrible, terrible loss. So Abby Boulin is going to be in net for us, and Blaine Laker is going to be in net for the Panthers. And we lost 2-1. That's not good. We cannot go into the playoffs on a losing streak and if we continue to lose we might not even get into the playoffs yeah not a good game again uh, we were outshot 35 to 25 Prokopiev was the first star of the game he had a goal in an assist Mikhail Anderson was the second star with a goal and Richard Richard Schmelik was the third star with two assists so Mikhail Anderson opened up the scoring in the first from Boris Mironov and Alexander Mogilny uh, but then uh, the Panthers tied the game. It was tied at one after one. And then all the way into the midway point of the third period. Uh, then they scored and we could never tie the game. So we lost two to one. All right. Well, we cannot miss the playoffs. So we are assured of making the playoffs it just it's just a matter of who we are going to face and it looks like you know if tendency keeps 
the way it is, is it looks like we're going to face the Islanders. <laughs> and we've not been very good against them this season, so I'm not sure how that's going to go if that's what happens. Uh, Terry Crisp might lose his job as the coach of the Mighty Ducks. They are 17-57-6. and six. We are tired of him already. Steve Iserman's point streak ended at 13 games. He was scoreless against the Jets. Right. The red light stays on for Josef Stumpel. He had three goals and two assists against Hartford. In that same game, Joey Juno had three goals and two assists. Christian Rutu is suspended with the Flyers. He's going to miss eight games. And Brettel extends his goal straight to six games with a goal and two assists against the Colorado Avalanche. All right, so we're going to be... Uh, at Madison Square Garden to play the Rangers. Rangers are pretty good. 42, 29, and 9. That's good for second in the East. Uh, we are 1 and 3 against the Rangers. So another team we've been struggling against. So hopefully we can kind of rectify that here. So Nikolai Abibulin is going to be in net for us. Fred Brathwaite is going to be in net for the Rangers. And it's a tie, so we tied the Rangers 2-2, two, two. not too upset about that. They're a pretty good team. Uh, looks like it was a pretty uh, offensive game there, looking by the shots at least. Uh, we outshot them 40-34. to Tony Amante was the first star of the game, he had an assist. Bill Guerin was the second star with a goal. And uh, Jurgis Baca was the third star with a goal as well. So, Rangers scored first in the first, and then we tied the game. Uh, McGillney scored his 35th on the power play from Robert Zvela and Brian Bradley. It was tied at one, but then the Rangers took the lead with another goal. 2-1 to one Rangers here after one. Then in the second period, Bill Guerin scored from German Titov and Sean Chambers. Tied at two after two. Nobody scored in the third or in overtime, obviously. We won this 2-2. Two to two. All right. Oh, Craig Button might lose his job as the GM of the Mighty Ducks. So we just saw their records. Actually, they lost one more game since last time we checked. Um, Todd Marshaw extends his goal streak to five games. He had a goal here against the Jets. Todd Marshaw playing for the Kings. And Alexis Zamnov is back from suspension. Okay, and we have one game left here. Mark Gregg's suspension is over. He's going to be back in the lineup for the Whalers, who have like one more game to play before the playoffs. And Pat Lafontaine extends his assist streak to 10 games with a goal and an assist against the Washington Capitals. All right, so we have one more game. Uh, it's against Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not going to be in the playoffs. They cannot catch Hartford, even if they beat us. They are 33, 39, and 9. That's good for 10th in the East. We are 2-2 two and two against the Flyers this season. Last game of the season for the Tampa Bay Lightning here. Mikael Sandberg is going to be in net for the Flyers, and we're, we're going to go with Nikolai Bibulin. And we won in overtime. So we reached 40 wins, which is not too shabby, if I can say so myself. Uh, Philadelphia outshot us 38 to 33 in that one. Jason Allison was the first star of the game. He had a goal. Uh, Yev Stukin was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Abby Bullen was the third star with 36 saves in that game. 16,317 people in Tampa Bay for this game. Uh, Philadelphia scored first in the first period, then Karpovtsev scored on the power play from Brian Bradley and Alexander McGillney, tied at one at that point, and then the Flyers scored again, and they had a 2-1 lead after one. Nobody scored in the second period, and Jason Allison scored his 20th of the season from Yanni Lokanen and German Tsitov. We were tied at two. So we went into overtime, and Robert Zvela played the hero in overtime from Len Barry. A 3-2 win to conclude the season on a high note. 
and with 40 wins. Pat Lafontaine's assist streak ended at 10 games. He had uh, no assist, but he did get a goal against the Hartford Whalers. Brettel has recorded 900 points in his career with an assist against Chicago. Brettel is 31 and he is a three and a half star player. A night to remember for Steve Eiserman, three goals and an assist against Dallas. Barry Trotz might lose his job as the coach of the Panthers. Panthers are 20, 48, and 14 at the conclusion of this season, and they are not too happy in Florida with his work. And Bruno Zarillo's suspension is over. He is back in the lineup for the Mighty Ducks, but it matters not because the season is over. And I am going to pause this here real quick and be right back yet again. And we are back again. All right. I had to go and gather some strength, and I, I may or may not have sacrificed a BB unicorn in my backyard for, for good luck here so that I can win the cup. So it looks like we're gonna be facing the Islanders. So I'm expecting probably a first round exit. We really have not played well against them this season. Who knows, like I said, maybe uh, maybe uh, Abby Bullen's gonna get on a hot streak or something and that's gonna be that. All right, so Wendell Young has been bought out by the Devils. So yeah, that happened. He did, you know, help us play some games at the very start of this playthrough and everything, but uh, we moved on, moved on from him pretty quickly. <laughs> All right. All right, so Robert Pukelovich is available. I'm not going to get him. All right, so we're going to look at the nominees. So for the art, we have Doug Gilmore, Mario Lemieux, and Ray Bork. For the Vizina, we have Andy Moog, Arthur's Earbay, and Ed Belfour. For the Norris, we have Larry Murphy, Nick Lidstrom, and Ray Bork. For the Calder, we have Eric Daze, Peter Sikova, and Stefan Yell. Two of them play for the Devils, wow. The, for the GM of the Year, we have Craig Patrick in Pittsburgh, Ari Sinden in Boston, and Mike Keenan in Chicago. As usual, I am completely ignored. The Selkie is going to be between Matt Sundin, Mike Modano, and Rod Brennamore. Lady Bing between Adam Oates, Joni Van Dyke, and Peter Sikara. Mark Messi Leadership Award between Chris Chelios, Joni Van Dyke, and Kelly Buckberger. The Ted Lindsay again between Doug Gilmore, Mario Lemieux, and uh, Ray Bork. And finally, the Jack Adams between Bob Belmore. Daryl Sutter and Scotty Bowman. All right, so my team is not represented anywhere, even though we finished at a decent fifth spot in the East. But, you know, we ain't good enough, man. All right, so I'm going to advance that to the first game, and then we're going to look at the play of trees. All right, so Hartford as the... <laughs> the difficult task of playing Pittsburgh uh, in the first round Washington's gonna play against the Rangers the bitter rivals Montreal and Boston are gonna face each other and we are facing the New York Islanders in the West we have Calgary against Chicago Toronto's playing against Colorado Vancouver against Detroit and the Winnipeg Jets against the Los Angeles Kings all right well we're going to take a look at the Islanders. With some luck, some of their players might be hurt. Oh, well, they have a lot of injuries. So Martin Gelina is hurt, not going to be playing in the playoffs. Steve Thomas, not going to play in the playoffs. Rich Pilon uh, might be back soon. He is day-to-day. -day. Uh, Mika Kiprusov, uh, Marco Kiprusov, sorry, uh, might be back soon. Uh, he is day-to-day. -day. Um, Mirko Ludeman... Uh, is hurt and then Glenn Ely is hurt and he's not going to be playing at least not against us 
wow, they do have a lot of injuries. Hopefully we can capitalize on that. Look at that goal tending. So uh, Victor Shistov and then Robert Shistad are in net for them. Malakov, Norton, Popovich, uh, Wilmer, Smith, Yuri Krupp uh, on D. That D's not great either. God, how can they beat us so, so good with all those injuries? Harkins, Benoit Ugg, Derek King, Tormanen, Ferraro, Turgeon, Bikov, Fidulov, Taylor, Fraser, Fitzgerald, Kosher, McInnes, Norris, and Paul Fee. I don't know, man. They have so many injuries, we need to be able to capitalize on that. Do we have a Bibolin in net? Yes, we do. He only has three fires. He lost some fire. He lost some fire down the stretch. He had five when we started the video. All right, so we're playing in uh, Union Dale. They had a better record than us, so we are starting this on the road. Come on, guys. Do me proud. So Abby Bolin in net for us. She stayed in net for the Islanders. Go Lightning, go! This is NHL Playoff Aki. And we lost 42. Oh my god. The outshot us 36 to 24. Ray Ferraro was the first star of the game. Three goals and an assist. Jason Addison was the second star with an assist. And Marty McInnes was the third star with two assists. Alright, so Islander scored first. Then German Tsitov scored from Bill Guerin and Jason Addison. And then. Uh, the Islanders scored again. It was 2 to 1. Islanders here after 1. Then in the second period, Len Barry scored from Alex Selivanov and Alexander Karpovta. We were tied at 2 after 2. But then Ray Ferraro scored twice in the third period to complete his playoff hat trick, and we lost 4 to 2. Ushan Chambers. Oh, God. Boris Muranov. Mikhail Anderson, Brent Gretzky, they all had really, really, really bad games. Oh, that's hurt us. All right, so as we saw, yep, and then big game for Paul Isabart. He had a hat trick as well against Vancouver. All right, so let's see here. Detroit beat Vancouver, Colorado beat Toronto, the Kings beat Winnipeg, Chicago beat Calgary. Uh, we lost against the Islanders, Pittsburgh beat Hartford, Montreal beat Boston, and Washington beat the Rangers. Right, we need to bounce back. We don't. We can't go back home down two. That's going to be a little difficult to come back. Right, Abby Boulin in net for us. She's had in net for the Islanders again. Come on, guys. <laughs> we lost three to one. Oh my god. What is it that they're doing over there? We were out shot again, thirty-four to twenty-eight. Ray Ferraro, another great game for him, a goal and an assist. Bobby Alik was the second star with an assist, and Va Vladimir Makov was the third star with two assists. So Islanders scored first in the first period, then they scored again in the second period, and it was two nothing Islanders here after two. Then they scored again in the third period. It was 3 nothing, And then Brent Gretzky scored with 2.44 left to go in the third period from Bobby Alic. We lost 3-1. to one. Oh, my God. Oh, well, that's exactly what we needed there. Alexander McGillney is hurt. He's day-to-day, -day, but I, I don't know that he's going to be able to play. Alexander McGillney is day to day. Uh, a minor neck laceration. And Sergei Fyodorov is also hurt day to day for the Detroit Red Wings. I don't think he's going to be able to play with that injury. He is not. So. Oh my god, who do I dress now? What do I do? What do I do? Oh my god. Yeah, panic in the room. Alright. Uh... 
I'm gonna dress cut Perrin. Let's uh, add a little bit of a uh, of grit to this line. Well, Perrin is not like a super tough guy or anything. He is tougher than Steve Ruchin. So. Yeah, that that's fine. All right, now what to do here? I think I'm gonna do something really weird. I think I'm giving Alex Sullivanov a chance. Well, maybe I should give it to Peltonen, to be honest. Yeah, maybe I should give it to Peltonen. Let's, uh. Let's put uh, our friend Scott Perrin on the fourth line here. Yeah, that messes up all of my lines. Put um, here. Oh, the pressure. Let's put Anderson here with you. All right. Let's see how we respond without, uh, you know, our first line right winger. Okay, Islanders are in town. Now we are on home ice. We need to win both games so that we don't lose. Uh, <laughs> so that we don't go further down. Uh, hopefully, Peltanen answers uh, pretty good. So, Robert Schistad again for the Islanders. Nikolai Abibulin for us. We just don't match up against the Islanders very good. That at that point that must have to do with the the tactics or something. Uh, we lost three nothing. We're down three nothing in the series. The Islanders outshot us twenty eight to twenty two. Pierre Turgeon was the first star of the game. He had two goals. Zygmunt Palfi was the second star with two assists, and Jeff Norton was the third star with an assist as well. Eighteen thousand five hundred and sixty three people in attendance for this game. There was a fight in the first period. Bobby Alik fought Rich Pilon, and then the Islanders scored both of their goals in the third period. Oh, sorry, no, they, that's not true. They scored uh, in the second period, and then they scored two more in the third period. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, Magion is still not able to play. All right, we're down 3 nothing. so let's go ahead and play this game. And at this point, I, we might get uh, swept. And I haven't checked the scores for the other series. I'm too focused on mine. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll take a look after this game here. So she's that in net for the Islanders again. Abby Boulin in net for us. So we got swept in four games. We lost 4-2. All right, so the Islanders outshot us 33-24. Benoit Ugg was the first star of the game. He had an assist. Mark Bergeron was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Marty McInnes was the third star with a goal. 19,248 people left the building. Pretty disappointed. And it is going to be see you guys next year. All right, so Islanders took a 2-0 lead into the first. And then Bobby Ugg scored from Mark Bergeron. It was 2-1. Then in the second period, Mark Bergevin scored from Boris Mironov and Brent Gretzky. It was tied at 2 after 2. But then Pierre Turgeon scored twice in the third period, and we lost 4-2. All right, so we fought all season long, and we ended up with a decent, you know, seed. But we ended up playing a team that really had our number. 
and we just couldn't do anything. Brian Scrudlin is hurt in Montreal. He's going to miss six months. Wow. Uh, Thomas Sandstrom is suspended with the Kings. He's going to miss three games. And there was no t stopping Timu Selani uh, in that same game. He had three goals and an assist. So we are eliminated. Did any other team get swept? Yes. Hartford got swept as well. Uh, Calgary got swept. And all of the other series are going. So what do we have here? So Detroit beat Vancouver, Winnipeg beat LA, uh, Colorado eliminated Toronto, New York won four nothing against Washington, and Boston beat Montreal six three. So there's still some series going. Oh yeah, cool. Now that we're eliminated, you're ready to come back. Oh, Montreal trounced Boston seven nothing. I think that's a that series is a three three now. Oh, yay! And now Jason Marshall apparently got hurt for you know doing nothing. All right, so Boston eliminated Montreal with a 4-3 to three win. We're going to look at the trees here real quick. So I have to select a Hall of Fame nominee. Who am I going to nominate? So we have Pete Maovlich, Wolf Payment, Bob Murray, Gary Unger, Peter McNabb, Pitt Martin, Jean Pronovo, Gilles Maloche, Rick Keough, and Phil Russell. I think I'm gonna go with Pete Malvich. I think that's fine. All right, uh, let's take a look at the second round of the playoffs. Brought to you by well, nobody is sponsoring me, so brought to you by me. Uh, the Islanders, who just eliminated us, are going to be facing Pittsburgh. Boston is gonna play against the Rangers. Winnipeg is going to be playing against Chicago and Detroit against Colorado. So the Kings got eliminated in the first round. Sorry, uh, my friend uh, JT Dutch. And the Habs got also eliminated in the first. So sorry, my friend FJ. Uh, and sorry to me, the Sens didn't even make the playoffs. And my Tampa Bay Lightning team is already eliminated. So I don't have a Oris in the game anymore. I am going to pick <sighs> let's pick Detroit I don't want for Pittsburgh to get two cups in a row come on Detroit make me proud and Leach out of action okay so Brian Leach got hurt Valery Kamienski has a strong game for Colorado he had four assists Okay, those players. Pierre Turgeon, a strange off-season workout leads to success for Pierre Turgeon. Well, his season is not over, so I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, so Colorado beat Detroit nine to five. Chicago beat Winnipeg four to one. Pittsburgh beat the Islanders three to two, and the Rangers won two to one against Boston. Oh, Jason Marshall is ahead of schedule. You mean he's got his his foot contusion will allow him to play before the to come back before the next game in September? That is incredible. I can believable. All right. Uh, Detroit came back in their series. They won two to one. Chicago beat Winnipeg three to two. The Islanders beat Pittsburgh 4-1 and Boston 1-4-3. So Chicago is up 2-0 in their series, but the other two series are the other three series are tied at one. Alright. J 
Jason Marshall is back. Oh, that's such a relief. Uh, Colorado beat Detroit 4 1. Winnipeg beat Chicago. The Islanders beat Pittsburgh. And the Rangers beat Boston. So all the series are 2 to 1. Detroit tied the series at 2, Winnipeg tied the series at 2, Islanders are up 3-1 against Pittsburgh, and Boston, I believe, just tied the series at 2. Colorado took a 3-2 lead in their series, uh, so did Chicago, Pittsburgh won. And Boston won as well. Yarmir Jagger keeps fans on their feet all night with a four goals and one assist performance against the Islanders. And in that same game, Mario Lemieux had five assists. All right, so Colorado eliminated Detroit. So there goes my my pick. Uh, Chicago beat Winnipeg. I believe they eliminated them. Uh, Pittsburgh, I believe, are now tied at three with the Islanders, and I believe Boston eliminated the Rangers. Right, and Pittsburgh goes uh, against Boston in the Eastern Finals, and Colorado is going to face Chicago. If I got that right. Did I get that right? Boston, Pittsburgh, Colorado, Chicago. Oh, oh boy, I don't want for Pittsburgh to repeat, so I want for anybody else to win. Pittsburgh beat Boston, and then Colorado beat Chicago. Who does? Oh, they still have Ronick Stall in that, so they have decent goaltending. I didn't pick Colorado because I didn't think they would have the goaltending because they obviously didn't get Patrick Roy like they did in real life, but they still have Ronick Stall and he's still able to carry them a little. Uh, Pittsburgh beat Boston, Colorado beat Chicago, so both series are 2 nothing. Pittsburgh. Uh, beat Boston and Chicago did beat Colorado. Wow, Boston might get swept in the Eastern Conference Finals. And they did, and Colorado trounced Chicago 7-0, so I think that's going to be our finalists. That, well, Pittsburgh for sure. Pretty sure Colorado's going to see them in the finals. Big game for Valery Kamienski. He had two goals and four assists in that game against Chicago. And strong night for Wendonan. He had three goals and an assist. All right. Let's see here. Oh, Chicago refuses to die. They got a shot out of their own. 2 nothing. So they are still in it. Still alive. Not anymore, Colorado 1-2-1, one, one. so the final is going to be against the Pittsburgh Penguins and the uh, Colorado Avalanche. I'm going to cheer for Colorado. Oh, Pittsburgh won the first game 5-3. And then the second one 5 nothing. Ron Extall must be beside himself. <laughs> <laughs> Must be yelling at the referees real loud and you know banging his stick on the ice and stuff because I know that uh, in the 1993 series against Montreal uh, when he was playing for the Nordiques that's what he was doing. So all right. oh Pittsburgh won three nothing. Wow, they might sweep a uh, sweep Colorado in the finals. Oh, thank you for showing me that uh, that uh, scouting report. I haven't seen it before. Yep, yeah, I think it's over. Yep, yeah, Colorado got swept in the finals. All right, day to day injury puts Lemieux in the press box. Okay, you should you should have time to heal. All right. 
and a 6 to 1 win. All of Fame vote. Oh god, I have to uh, I have to vote for people to get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, who do I vote for? I think Ted Lindsay should be in. Um Probably Bathgate, probably Goring. I think I'm gonna stop here. I'm only voting for three. There you go. All right, so the Stanley Cup has been awarded to the Pittsburgh Penguins again, and they're probably always gonna be on our way if we are to win the Stanley Cup, so we better start getting better soon. <clears throat> I'm gonna d go day by day so that I don't miss anything and of course I'm gonna go all the way up to the the awards and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, stop there so Rymo Elmanen had a charity ball hockey game so good for him I think we've seen that before I've been extended. Well, thank you, thank you. Wayne Cashman wants to stay. What are you? An assistant coach? I don't know. Oh, all of my assistants need to be... Uh, uh, how about... No. Are you good at coaching prospects and defensive skills? I guess I can keep you for my defensive coach. I'm sure I can find better, but... Uh, Maybe not. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't think you're coming back. So I'm keeping this guy. I'm going to put him in charge of the D. He's not too terrible for that. But the other ones, I'm going to need to find more people. I'm going to, I'm going to need to not forget, too. That's going to be the challenge. So what sucks is that we did just good enough to not get a great player in the draft. So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Free agency preview. Yeah, I don't like to look at that because, you know, teams don't necessarily will not necessarily let those guys walk or anything like that. Like, is Montreal really going to let Eric Desjardins walk? I don't know, but if they do, I've been trying to trade for him, like, approximately 71 times. So I'm going to sign him. I'm going to give him a few million bucks. He's going to be happy. And, yeah. 
and I'm going to be happy as well, and everybody's going to be happy, and hopefully you guys are happy as well. Oh, John Paddock lost his job uh, as the coach for the Winnipeg Jets. All right. And they are going to have Jean Perron to uh, coach over there. All right, so today is the NHL Awards, so let's take a look at that. All right, the art goes to Mario Lemieux at 167 points in 81 games. That's right there, guys. That's, you know, more than a point per game, uh, more than two points per game, sorry. All right, uh, the Connie Smite goes to Larry Murphy. Oh, look at those sideburns that Larry Murphy uh, has uh, with this uh, face gen there. So he did get 26 points in the playoffs. The Calder goes to Peter Sikor. He had 78 points in 75 games. That's pretty good. The Norris goes to Ray Bork. He had 106 points as a defenseman. Pretty well deserved. Mike Modano was the Selkie winner. The Vizina goes to Andy Moog. Harry Sinden is the GM of the year. And the coach of the year is Bob Belmore. So I'm going to take a look at all that here. All right, so uh, Mario Lemieux scored the most goals in the league. He had 61 goals. All right. Sean Burke wins the Roger Crozier Saving Grace Award. Ed Belfort gets the Jennings. Oates the Lady Bing. Claude Lemieux, the Bill Masterton. Mark Messier Leadership Award goes to uh, Kelly Buckberger. Ted Lindsay Award goes to Mario Lemieux. All right, the All Stars named after the season. I didn't get anybody in there. All right, Lemieux wins Art Trophy after Dynamic Season. We saw that, we saw that, we saw all of those. Alright, so I believe this is where I'm going to stop here. So, uh, yeah, next time out, we're going to do the draft and the off season. I'm going to try to sign some free agents. I need help on D. I've been saying that for a very long time now. Hopefully, I can do something about it here on July 1st. I'm going to throw a lot of money at guys like Eric Desjardins if they are still available. I will be like, take my money, man. Just take it. But anyway, so a little bit of a disappointing finish. Uh, we got swept in the first round. Uh, part of it is probably the tactics, so we didn't like match up against them all that great. Uh, good news is that the next season is coming around, and we are starting to have some of our younger players to, uh, that are, you know, developing and everything. So. Uh, the, hopefully that's going to help and of course I'm gonna get some help through free agency I hope and I hope that Abby Bullen gets a little bit better than just two stars here hopefully that's uh, going to grow here during the off season all right so I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for today uh, as usual I do want to thank you for tuning in and if you've liked the video despite the fact that we lost lamentably Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until I roll this game again, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.